in, in Kabbalah. And um, <clears throat> what I really wanted to get into with you is sometimes some of the responsibility that's related to the crown. You know, um, as of late, I've had uh, a lot of moments where I've had to meditate on on what it means to be the desire, the will, or the cause of an experience, or to be, uh, you know, we talk about the women being the light bearer, but the concept of being a light giver and um, what that could mean on different levels. So it begins with the crown. The crown is our number one. When we look at the Kabbalistic tree of life, um, we have a domain or, or a trinity of domain that exists, uh, which represents intellectualism, you know, uh, coming from Chokma, Baina, Ketha, right? And um, that concept, when we're dealing with the crown becomes crucial because what it really represents is it represents those things that exist before intellectualism. You see, uh, a lot of times, unfortunately, in a culture community, we're only interested in things that spark our, our brain. And we don't really give much thought to the mind. And as a result, there's a pointed arrogance that falls. And because of that pointed arrogance, we never really receive our crown, though we uh, imposter ourselves as those who do have it. And I'm going to explain to you um, the importance of humility, the importance of the ability to bend the ego, and most importantly, the importance of listening as it relates to the crown and Kether. Um, so Kether is comprised of three Hebraic letters. I know that you will be starting your Hebraic classes very soon. And um, you'll be able to go over some of these letters and, you know, kind of become a bit more familiar with them. But Kether is a combination of Koth, Koth, um, Tav, and Resh. Okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain what those letters are, what they represent, what they mean, right? So with uh, Kovtaf and Resh, right, um, we have a lot of different sciences that are present. And the first thing to understand with Kov, Kov represents a spoon or means spoon. It's another word for spoon, right? And one of the important things about that concept is that what it's symbolizing is a container, a holder, right? So the crown begins with the ability to receive. Now, why this becomes really important, because again, we're talking about the, uh, the single point desire and will of light, where it emanate, emanates from where it begins, right? And in understanding that that begins with the ability to receive what is being received, right? And most importantly, what is being contained. So the concept there of that spoon or of that bent uh, figure with cough is the concept of receiving spirit. So you, it's the same relationship that you have between heaven and earth or in Kabbalistic teachings uh, between Kether and Malkut, right? Um, or we'll say the top and the bottom for now, right? Um, they both pull towards each other. So the physical container pulls towards the spirit and the spiritual intent and idea and thought pushes towards the container. Now both are required. It's a, it's a proactive kind of experience. It's not just that the container says, uh, all right, I'm just sitting here and I'm waiting to be filled up. Or the spirit is just saying, I'm just going to go into anything I can go into. Uh, the container often has to be molded or remolded to accommodate the spirit. And the spirit sometimes has to be adapted into the shape of the container, right? So your leadership 
or your idea of royalty or rulership begins with that very notion. Your adaptability and your ability, when you look at a uh, cough, it's bent. It, it, it looks like a backward C almost. You know, so it's the, it's the concept that of, of bending to cup something, bending to receive something, bending to give something, right? So with Kether, and we're still just, we're on one letter, but we're speaking about the importance of the crown. You know, there is this idea that um, if I can prove it, or most importantly, if I can understand it, then I will be um, amenable to it, you know, or I will be submissive to it. And with that concept, you never receive the crown. I know it's a very common statement, especially in relationships. Sometimes people will say that I'm willing to submit if I understand the plan. What's the plan? And they'll start hammering a person with a lot of questions. What are we doing? What's this? What's that? without realizing that oftentimes they're questioning themselves out of the potential of a relationship. Um, when it was the Hebrews who received the experience or the, the revelation of the Most High, Mount Sinai, they said that we will follow. Follow what? We're just going to follow you. To do what? I don't know. That was when they received their first crown, the children of Israel. You see, their crown wasn't received because of um, how smart they were. Their crown wasn't received because of all the great works that they, mer they merited, all the people that they killed. Their crown was received because of their faith and their, their willingness to say that, you know what, this feels like the cause. This feels like the beginning we're going to follow this. We're going to go with this. Oftentimes, um, and I even notice it a lot of times in Anu, a lot of times some of you don't do anything until you're intellectually sparked. That's why you'll never have a crown. You see, if I say something that sounds really deep, that you feel like you could use again, you'll write a note. If I say something that you think you already know, you don't write a note. You see, so you never receive your crown. You always remain outcasted from the realms of spirit. So there's a humility that's required there in the very beginning in order to receive light. Because what's coming down from Kether, it's light. And the concept of Kether is the root of light. You know, a lot of times we speak about rooting and we imagine that rooting takes place only in, let's say, Malkut, or only in the element of earth, you know, or a kingdom reality, that's earthly rooting. Divine ruling is rooted in light. So you can have wisdom that's not rooted in light. You can have actions that are not rooted in light. You can have all these different things that are not rooted in light, meaning that they're not divine. You know, there's a, there's a complement to all things you see so that's the reception of the light now when it gets really deep we have another side or it gets really um maybe a little tricky um you have the giving of it right so when you're giving light light is given without expectation we're still on one letter. We haven't even gotten to the other two yet. But when you are sending forth from the crown, what you're doing is you're sending forth pure intention. And where it lands and how it lands is based upon the shape, the formation of your tree. So in the Kabbalistic tree of life, we know that we have 10 sephiroth and one hidden on the front side. We'll get to the backside, um, maybe this time or maybe another time. Um, but the concept there is that that light that comes from the crown is not concerned about how Geberah will use its light or how Hod 
will use its light or how chesed will use its light. It's not concerned about that. It's only concerned that it gets it. You see, and how it forms is it's up to it's up to it. And it has to reflect upon how it's formed. So sometimes that's the science in our gifts or the sad science. We have a gift and we have an emanation, we have a divine spark, and we want to control every aspect in every moment of how it expresses itself, you see, which is very satanic. Um, this is what we call freestyle. You may have a, a vocabulary that's inside of you. You may even have an innate sense of rhythm and cadence. And in a moment, you decide to just let it flow through you. Where it lands, it lands. How it comes out, it comes out. You see, this is the basis and order of creation. It's not as micromanaged as we like to imagine. You see, at the higher levels. At the lower levels of creation and magic and ritualization, it's very micromanaged. So you can get a book and you can find out step by step how to do certain things. If you read Grasping the Root of Divine Power, there's certain rituals I give you in the back with ambiguous instruction. That wasn't because I forgot to put measurements in there. It was a test. And I always like to see who contacts me about measurements. How much alcohol am I supposed to use? You just said use alcohol. You didn't say how much frankincense. You didn't say how much lime. You didn't say how, yeah. Because when you start to tap into the higher realms of reality, divine reality, you can't ritualize. You can't ritualize towards an arc, arc entity. It doesn't work. Doesn't matter what book you read. Doesn't matter what society you join. No one will ever be able to do a ritual that will bring forth Metatron, who's a high energy angel, right? So how do we bring forth these high energies? How do we manifest them? You invoke them through action. So the more you align yourself with the principles that they represent, the more they appear. That's the only way you can do it. Through ritual, you can fake. So when you're tapping into lower end entities and low vibrational entities, you could be the most horrible person in the world. But as long as you follow the instructions and follow the process, something's going to happen. You probably will invoke what it is that you want to invoke. You see, but when you get to the higher realms of creation, your money is no good. Your currency is your character based action that's filled with light. Can't get around it. You see. Um, when we think about the crown or we think about Kether, Kether is an expression of the universe, but it's not its expression. It is the unmanifested. So I'm going to give you an example. All of us are a trinity within ourselves. We all represent a trinity. Now, how is that, right? Because I am me, I am myself. And I know some of you may be thinking, well, mind, body, spirit, things like that. That's not what I'm speaking about. Uh, in this reality, it always takes three to bring something forward, right? You understood this from Supreme Mathematics. It takes a one and two to create a three, but you're always the third. You as an individual are always the third, you see? And what comprises you is unseen. It took two individuals to come together to make you, but we can't necessarily see them. We can see you, but it's similar to pure light. If you take pure white light and you look at it, will you see green? No. Or you see red? No. But if you take that same white light and you put it, put it through a prism, what will you see? Green, red, orange. You'll see all of the different elements that comprise that source light. You see? 
So within you, there's a trinity, there's a multitude of energies, but you are not those multitude of energies. You see? This is an important concept. We haven't even gotten to the next letter yet. This is an important concept when you're dealing with the crown because we all come from something. <laughs> we all come from someone or someones. And um, part of our acknowledgement, whether it be on an ancestral perspective or an astral perspective, um, we, we get to acknowledge that when our light is pushed through prisms, right? And sometimes those prisms are pleasant. Sometimes they're, they're, uh, they're not so present, you know. But nonetheless, what creates us is will and desire. Um, we know this looking at children. Um, there's always a, there's always an end to the persistent questioning of a child about a particular thing. If you source a child, you get them to ask you a question about something and they keep asking and they keep asking and they keep asking. Eventually the, the answer is going to be because I wanted to. That's, it's always going to be that. It doesn't matter what what they the question they ask because that's what they want to do. That's what I want to do. So you'll find that at the root of all things manifest is desire. I know some systems tell you to remove desire because desire leads to suffering. It does. But desire is also the divine root. And it coexists with will. Will and desire are made it to one another. You see? So within all of us is will and desire. In all of us is, is, is give and take, is reception and negation, is positive light and negative light. It took positive light and negative light for us to be created biologically. It took reception, taking, and giving for us to be created. It took will and desire, an affinity towards one another. For us to be created so within us already we have three three components we are a trinity we represent the trinity you see now those higher concepts of will and desire don't come into place until you get to the higher realms of existence the higher sephira you see and you invoke certain energies through your behavior, through your action, through your character. Or you could spend your life doing rituals. Some would be offended by the concept of me saying that. It's because they don't know any better. That's it. Um, some people are satisfied with playing in kindergarten and some people wanna get PhDs. What exists at the PhD level? Chokma Bina Kepta. You see. Now, again, Chokma or Kepta is pure imagination. That's the value of the crown. Uh, whenever you think of a crown, one of, a, a better example or representation is the halo that you see in a lot of um, antique art. The halo is something that exists, it, it encircles the head, but it, um, it doesn't touch it. Now, kether means crown, but it also means to encircle. Okay. Now, the value and the science of the halo is that it doesn't actually touch you. It's not something that you can touch per se, but it still covers and encircles you. Okay, I'm, and I'm going to get into that. In a, in a second, right? Let's let's hit the second letter. Tav, T A V, Tav. Tav uh, represents truth. Okay, represents truth. Now, um, if you ever study the science or just look at the science of the golem, the golem is are these uh, creatures that um, 
ancient mystics used to create in order to protect themselves or they could send them to do something to another person and the golem uh they would write uh uh an inscription on the forehead of the golem and the inscription inscription uh was what we would call maybe uh emmet like emmet till um aleph mim tav it means truth and that would bring the golem to life truth inscribed aleph mim tav now aleph we know means master you know and it's it's that divine energy so whenever they were done with the golem and they didn't want to use it or in order to defeat it if you could reach the golem's forehead and rub out the aleph and leave met you could kill it because met means to die you see now the science of of Emmet or truth is that Aleph is the first letter of the he Hebraic alphabet, and Tav is the last letter of the Hebraic alphabet, and Mem is the middle letter of the Hebraic alphabet. So truth represents is a journey. You see, it's a journey. So. The concept there, just on the second letter, we're still dealing with Kether, right? Um, how does Kether relate to the idea or how does Tav um, relate to that idea? Um, with the Tav, you're speaking about the power point or where power is held, excuse me, how power is held by the initiative, by the initiate, right? Um, we could just say that you all would be considered the initiative, the initiates. Tav is always considered to be a seal or mark of something, right? So whenever you see Tav in tradition, Tav will typically represent completion. Okay, um, of course, it being the last letter, but it also represents um, the ending of things. Um, and it's the completion of truth. So very similar to how in 120, we have the supreme alphabet that takes us from knowledge to born and gives us a full cycle of an experience. In the Hebraic alphabet, you have Aleph to Tav. And truth cannot manifest until you reach top. You see. Still just on the second letter. But you see already some of the concepts that are associated with rulership. Um, when you look at the first word of the Torah, Bereshit, very important word. We're going to get into that. Well, when you read it in English, you read in the beginning, right? So Bereshit is in the beginning. And Bereshit contains an important word in it. So I'm going to skip forward a little bit. I'll skip forward and I'll come back. Bereshit contains the word uh, Beresh, Resh. Resh. Okay, you remember I told you that crown is, is composed of, you know, or kether. It's kof, tav, resh. Resh, resh um, is, a, is a natural letter. But um, sometimes resh is, conf is confused with rosh. Like when you hear rosh Hashanah, you know, New Year, you know. Um, they, they're not the same, per se. They, they, they're related, but not the same. In Bereshit, you have Be or Bet, which is the which is the first letter, right? Which would be like an equivalent to your to your B. Um, 
Then you have Rish, which is head. Resh is also where you get the Amoric word Ras. Some of you may be familiar with Ras, like Rastafari. So Rish, Rash means king, means king or ruler or head. Okay. Um, and and it's, it's prevalent in different languages as well. Um, but bear is sheet. So we already know that bear or bear is house. Bet, house. Resh, head. T, bear is sheet. T, tav, is truth. This is the first word of your Bible. Or the first word of your Torah. So who is the head or the truthful head of the house of the Most High? Well, there's someone who said that I am the truth, the way, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we're speaking about Yahweh Shai. That was the very first word of the Torah was a foreshadowing of Yahweh Shai. Bereshit. You see. So let's get let's let's deal with it for a second again. Um, and I want to give you something also on Kof. When you look at the word ani, ani, I, in Hebrew, you know, um, ani will say, I want, you know, um, or, or ani, ani bin, I am son, ani bat, I am the girl, you know, ani bin, I am the boy, I am, ani bat, I am the girl, um, ani abba, I am the father, ani ima, I am the mother, right? But when we look at the word ani, there are two forms of ani, which are which are important to your lesson today. You have ani, and then you have anich, and they almost seem to mean the same thing, I. But anich actually refers to I am submitting. It's an idea of submission. Why? Because it has the cough at the end. It has the bent spoon at the end. I have submitted. Um, now, I want you to understand there's an important thing there, and we'll, we'll, we'll tap into that with cough and resh. Because cough, your first letter, and resh both represent containers. They're both containers. Okay. Um, resh is the, con is the container of the infinite. So when you look at it drawn, it looks like a backwards R. Um, but it's actually supposed to represent a person's head bowed in submission. Um, so if you could take the Vav letter, and I know you don't know all these letters yet, but you will soon. So don't worry about it. If you can take the Vav letter and then you bend it at the top, you get Rev, Resh. Okay. So the concept there is that it's the head, but the ruler has to become the servant in order to rule. You can't rule without serving. So the ruler is sitting high on a throne, but the ruler must stoop in order to serve effectively and properly. You see. Now, that is probably the strongest core of what it is that we're talking about. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times the meaning of, um, what we are as, as leadership or as coordinator, or as fathers or heads of households, it doesn't extend to the idea of service. If you take the word rash in Hebrew, which is resh and shin. Shin represents fire. It means poor. P-O-O-R. Poor. It's not until you add the Aleph to the word or the master that it means head. You see the 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 um the similarity between poor 
you you can have a sense of leadership but without that that without that presence of the master or the presence of the most high you're poor and rush is resh aleph shin resh first letter aleph is the middle letter shin is the last letter you see when you're saying resh um whereas rash is resh and shin so there's this concept there of proper rulership proper headship you see and without a connection to the creator um it becomes poverty. Now, you know in the Anu way that, as we say, poverty is a plague. So seeking rulership without light, because that Aleph represents that light that's coming from the crown, that's coming from Kether. Uh, and I know, again, in the culture community, we focus a lot on vibes and declarations and affirmations. <laughs> Whether they're accurate or not, or not, that's just what our focus is on. You know, so if I say I'm king this, or I'm Ross this, or I'm queen that, or I'm empress that, that's what it is. I, Ani, not Anich. I am this because I have submitted to what is, what is flowing through me. I have allowed that. And however that light flows through me, I'm receptive to it, which is really my true freedom because I'm not trying to place expectations on how the creator manifests itself throughout my tree. Because when you look at the tree of life, you need to understand that we're all a tree. We, we are the tree. The top represents your head. But after you get past those first three sephiroth, you're dealing with your emotions. Manifested through your... your um, feminine or, or your masculine side so whether you're dealing with uh glory wanting to be seen or your strength you know um or things like that or your, your desire to be merciful or, or you know um or your beauty right uh these are all emotional values you see so that's why a lot of times um you can invoke those spirits through ritual spirits of strength spirits of beauty uh, the feeling of love and things like that. You can invoke those down down low. Um, some sometimes will comment that I don't give as much ritual as I used to. Well, because you're supposed to go up the tree. It's not that I forgot the rituals. I still know all of them. Um, but if you've been listening and following all this time, you shouldn't need them as much as you did before if you've been applying you see so you should have been able to go from poverty to headship from rosh to resh you see now i know a lot of people are still stuck at rash or rosh um you can only do but so much right so um there's a numerical value you know resh is the 20th letter we'll, we'll we'll probably break down the numbers i don't i don't want to confuse you too much but kether itself its geometric value is 620 and that 620 represents all of the the commandments that the creator has given to us okay you have you have the seven noach uh laws or nuach laws and then you have the 613 commandments that were given All right so it becomes easy when you start to try to figure out well how do i reclaim my royalty how do i reconnect with the crown 620 commandments it's not really that difficult you know so but is there a ritual I can do? Is there oil that I can put? No. You could do that for the low level stuff. You could do that to invoke or, or to ritualize towards low level entity entities that will work all day. But, um, 
With Resh or with the head, you're containing infinity and the flow and the change of life. It's different. You see, it's much different. Um, so let's look at something really, really quickly, right? Um, in terms of Kether and why it must be present. Um, like I said, as spirit pulls towards material, material lust and pulls towards spirit and sometimes our crown isn't open you know sometimes our crown is still locked down and um as a result we're not receiving the light that our body is craving for which will physically make us less healthy than we should be you see uh, there's no coincidence that we are undergoing um a dispensation that I think we can uh, responsibly and respectively call the dispensation of Corona. I mean, this is this is this is the season of Corona. I mean, I don't think you could really get around that, or you know, I, I don't think there's any other more prevalent um, concept right now. Right, this is the season of the crown. Corona means crown. Um, for those who didn't know, you probably know that by now. So if we're understanding that in order to connect to soup to upper super nows, there's no ceremony that we can use. There's no practices that we can use, but there has to be direct connection with the energies through, through, through our experience. Right. Um, that tells us that the crown can't be, it can't be connected or accessed directly, but has to be invoked. So what I, what I would like to do is to give you the personal challenge to think about how you're invoking that higher crown daily, you see, because that's how you reconnect. You know, are you affirming and connecting three times a day? Facing the East? Or are you just doing what you do? Right? You'll know when you're disconnected from the crown because not only is it very difficult to manifest things, but there's a, there's a very distinct kind of depression that begins to set in when you're no longer connected to the crown. And then you'll find yourself hyper-ritualizing you know, um, you're not channeling the purity of the crown's potential. So you have to work hard. You see, it's very similar to if anyone has ever done any rituals, when you first start, it's, it's extremely exhausting. I know when I first started years ago, I would sleep for a day or two afterwards. I was just spent um, because I didn't know how to channel energy and when you're younger you're full of chi so you you know you just use your own chi right but of course that can knock you out um if anybody ever has watched the mandalorian you'll see uh i think his name is grodo or grogo whatever um but the little baby yoda you know whenever he attempts to do anything supernatural he falls asleep it knocks him out you know um, because he hasn't yet learned, it's learned how to channel the force around him. So he's still using his own chi, you see. Um, we don't get back to restoration like that. You, you have to always remember as above, so below. So sometimes you can manifest so many things below that you think you have achieved what's above, but you've only achieved, achieved a mirror reflection of it. You know, that's where humility of cough comes in because the crown is not something that's within you, it's above you. You gotta always remember that, you see. Um, it's a lamp, it's a light. And it's the actual light of creativity. It's your first contact 
and potential of what we call existence and is not inside of you. So sometimes even a concept of all answers being within is false. I've said that many times, but um, I know it's not a popular truth, you see. But as you see with Kether, you, can't re you cannot come anywhere near the crown without accepting truth, you see. You can't come anywhere near the crown without stooping. That is the compassion and the beauty of the creator and that the creator stooped in order to service. So as we are emulating that spirit and emulating that concept, that's a constant and everyday thing. Sometimes we may go through things and, um, People ask us how we get through it or, you know, um, sometimes people ask you how you continue to move forward. And um, as above, so below, right? So as the crown does, we do, you know, and that's, that's the focal point. How can we ever restore things back to where they're supposed to be until we look at the potential of existence that brought us forth and mirror it until we can become it again? When you're doing what you're doing for notoriety of fame or for likes, you're still focusing on the lower levels of the tree. They get you nowhere. You have to focus on what you imagine because what you imagine, um, you'll never touch. That's the beauty of it. You know, sometimes people get into love relationships and um, they want their mate to be their fantasy. It's one of the worst things you can do. Have a fantasy, keep your fantasy. Don't give up your fantasy. You see, because that's where your potential of creation comes from, from what you fantasize about as your potential of, of being, it crystallizes itself through your tree. Being Malkut, being Gaborah, you know, being uh, all these different, the, the different Sephiroth. And then what happens is through that tension of being and non-being, division comes. You are a division of your parents, you see. But the division that came as a result of this experience of being and non-being between the, the crown and earth or the crown and Malkut, we call that, that division the clip off, which is the backside of the tree, the shadow side, you see. Division is inevitable. It's, it's inevitable. Um, it's impossible for us to fully encapsulate the idea of negative light. But when you're speaking about, we are positive light. What we can see, the creator, the most high is negative light. It goes back to the source. I know it's, it's very difficult to imagine, but that's the whole point. You cannot figure it out with your intellectual mind. You see, when they were approached at Mount Sinai, the, their intellectualism didn't say, we'll follow you because it makes sense. Because No, we're, we're going. And as a result, a crown was received. So all of us come to a point where we have to decide um, if there's going to be faith or not, you know, if we can calm the hyperactivity of the nervous system, you know, and feel that flow in front of us. Sometimes, unfortunately, people have 
high level flow in front of them and they don't see what they have. You see, they stay stuck. And um, there's not much you can do about that. You see, their channels are so blocked that uh, they don't realize that you can't intellectualize your way in or out of this. You know, especially when certain conversations or, or certain concepts are so far behind us now at this point, at this stage of the game. You see, um, if we're climbing the snake, some of us are on that snake's neck, you know, making steady progress. And there's certain people that want to have debates about the snake's tail. You know, as if we just all showed up here at the same time. See, you have to be able to respect your progress towards the crown. That's important because you'll lose your place. You see, you'll lose your place. You'll forget I'm at the neck. You'll forget I'm at the head. I don't have to do what you do. Sometimes even when trouble comes, you realize that I don't even have to um, fret the way that you do. I don't have to mourn the way that you do. Now, that means many different things, though, because the closer we get to the crown, what happens? More service. We're not allowed to do what everybody else does because Resh tells us in order to be the head, the head has to bow and bend. Cough tells us that you have to be ready and willing to receive spirit and be molded and changed by spirit and accommodated. You see, Resh is the tough one in Ketha, the last letter, because it's, I, I have to channel the infinite. And it exp exponentially grows as far as it feels like growing. And it may take you places that you have no desire to be, you see. But your desire is the lower part of the tree. Sometimes you, you find yourself stuck, but you're not really stuck. You just commit it to not climbing. That's all. I'm not going to climb the higher parts of the tree. I'm not going to climb closer to the crown because I can't figure out what that is up there. And if I can't intellectually figure it out, I don't want anything to do with it. You're going to go to hell. You're going to stay in hell. You know, that's what's going to happen to you. There's no getting around it. You know, sometimes we think um, these pursuits are extracurricular. It's fun. I used to have people say, oh, yeah, man, you're doing a culture thing. It's not the culture thing. It's, it's my life. You see, a farmer is not doing the agricultural thing. The farmer is making sure that uh, its family stays fed. Right. Well, Someone who's delivering, curating, and presenting culture is not doing something ex extracurricular. They're maintaining the liberty of, of their existence in that way. You see, um, Anu, you got to be like sharks. You don't stop moving. No matter what, you don't stop moving. When you have to stay still, you move and stay still. You can run and, and have a still mind and figure things out that you got to do in life. You can hike and have a still mind. You got to keep punching. You got to keep moving. You got to be like a shark. If not, you'll never get to the truth at the end of the alphabet. You'll never get to the truth of it. You'll get stuck. You see, and once you get stuck, you'll lose, you lose your aleph, like the golem lose its aleph. What does it become? Met, dead. You see? Movement is life. And the most high energy is seeking to move through you. You see? And sometimes you fall in love with your container. You don't want your container to be filled up with more stuff. Well, the stuff is spirit got to keep moving. If, if you don't remember anything else, you keep moving. You keep punching. You keep kicking. You see, we all climb at different rates. That's okay. As long as you're climbing. 
But when you're doing more talking, you don't have the wind in your system to get to where you need to go. Now, if you're doing chants and you're doing cadence, you know, that's different. That's something else. But if you're talking to try to convince people that where you're at on the tree is, is where you're supposed to be, you're a goddamn fool. Well, you do what works for you, I do what works for me. What works for all of us is getting our crown back. That's everybody's goal on the planet. And if it ain't your goal, you're a goddamn fool. That was a very intellectual statement I just made. God damned fool. Don't be a goddamned fool. You see. So that's just one word. And there's so much more to it. There's so much more to Kether. There's so much more to the concept. Uh, but even in breaking down the smallest parts of things and recognizing that first I have to become a container. Number one. Number two, I have to seek for completion of truth. You see? And then I have to stoop to not only um, allow myself to be used as a vessel, but I have to stoop to allow myself to be a servant to whatever the creator chooses me to be a servant to. You see. That's how the crown is maintained. And then whatever happens after that, we don't know. But we're ready for it. Right? Because we have maxed ourselves out. There are some people in this life who touch the crown. They die. When they touch the crown. That's how that works. Once you touch the crown, you become an immortal. That's the science of an immortal. There's not much you can do on the planet once you're able to actually touch the halo. Imagine touching the sun. At that point, what what, what could you really do on Earth at that point forward? You don't touch the sun. You see? So you become something that we don't understand. You know? Some people say that's when you, you can graduate to become a deity. Uh, I don't think that's true, though. You can be a deity without doing any of that. You know? Because remember, there's different levels of deities. You could be a deity just because you're able to get someone a lover. Or you're able to, to uh, get a barren woman to become pregnant. You could become a deity that way. People will worship you. You know? And get out of your 360 deal and put out a single for the summer. You could be a deity that way. Uh, do a video of you, you know, an ex-stripper. Do a video with you kissing another woman. You could be a deity that way. There's all kind of ways to become a deity. So this is beyond our conception of being a, de a deity. But just understand that the division that you may experience with the people you once knew is inevitable because when light struggles with form, division must happen. It's, a, it's just a law of the universe. And that division creates a shadow which allows you to sit back and look at yourself. Like in our sacred Odu, Osa Meji, when we are staring into darkness. The darkness is you. That's, that's what that represents. But what it is, is, is you that's been divided because of your struggle with light. Now, there's different ways to struggle with light. You can fight against the light or you can work with the light. But either way, it's a struggle. You know, um, whether you choose to fight your molding or whether you choose to allow the molding, you still have to struggle with your own form. You see? And sometimes we're so soft and we, 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 we're such punks. We're not ready for any kind of struggle. We're not ready for any kind of discomfort. Somebody says something, we don't like the way we say it, we want to quit. I didn't like how you said that. I'm out. I didn't like that answer. We don't know how to ask for clarity on, on things. Um, we don't know how to change. We don't want to change. 
You see, because we're dumb, we don't want to change. We don't want to hear anything that would maybe lead to us addressing what those internal struggles are so we could go into the darkness because we're deaf. You see, we don't want to be shown any kind of sacred symbols or sacred geometry that we feel may spook us because we're blind. You see. No matter what happens, keep moving. If you need a good example of that, you go back and you read Spook Who Sat By The Door. You go watch Brother Lowe's Breakdown. You look at the end. You keep moving. No matter what. Because you're getting to the crown. So... I'm going to close out with that, but I want to affirm some good things for you all. You see, um, and by good things, things that you need, maybe that don't feel good to you, but things that you need, you know, um, some of you might be aware that there's been some, some challenges in my household, um, as of, as of uh, recent, and um, as a result of some of those challenges, uh, I have not been as um, mentally clear and strong as I as I'm known to, <laughs> to typically be. Um, but I'm still moving. You see. I'm still moving. I don't care if I'm in the middle of the fight, all my teeth are knocked out and both of my eyes are swollen shut. If I got a knife in my hand, I'm gonna keep stabbing you till my arm comes out the socket. And I asked one of my sons to set it back in the socket, you know, fix my shoulder, Baba's shoulder came out the socket so I could finish stabbing this person to fall back out again. That's how I'm built. Okay, so for those who are asking, how you been, Chief? How you doing? I'm going to keep stabbing till my arm come out of the socket. That's the blood that's in me. You see? So I'm going to affirm that, la that level of ferocity. Even if your, your brain isn't as sharp as you want it to be, um, I, or you're stuttering <laughs> um, because you're having trouble getting things out, and stuff like that, uh, don't you worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know, you don't have to be, be the most eloquent to be the most sincere or to be the most real. You see, you just have to take that truth. That's the thing. The truth serum is tough. It's tough, but you are built and based on the, from the material of truth. So why would you run from it? You're running from yourself. You come from the truth. You don't come from the lie. Now, you may have been turned into a lie later because you've allowed certain people and certain entities and certain institutions to rule over you and certain ideas to make, make a goddamn fool of you. You see, you may have done that. You may have left the, 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 the room a gorilla and let somebody out there make a monkey out of you. That may have happened, you see. But that's not what you were created from. You were created from truth. That's what you put your focus on. You don't run from it. So I'm affirming that for everyone. One, that you be a container, that you receive spirit, that you receive light. You don't fight it. However, it has to come because it's change, it's growth. You don't fight it. We all have our spoon that we got to bend, you see? You're all going to go through the test of cough. Can you bend this spoon? And you don't bend it with your brain. Like they said, there is no spoon. That's the whole secret to it. Mother effing right, there's no spoon. Because what I think is solid and fixed can always be changed into something else. 
So why would I be fixated on a spoon? I'm going to fixate on, on my ability to be a train, a, a, a agent for transformation and change. And then I affirm that you go to your, your Resh experience. Well, your Ketha experience, your, your Tav experience. And you seek for completion in that, and that change that cough brings. You seek to be completed in that form. And, you know, sometimes you may think about something. I tell you something like this. Some of you may be saying, one day I'm going to do what Chief does. That may be the imagination and the vision that's in you. Right? That may be your cough. I'm working to be transformed into someone who can coordinate for a group of people and, and care for them and love them and be responsible to them and so forth and so on. Okay, well, what if Chief gets shot in the head tonight? Now you, Chief. You do it. Sometimes it comes like that. Sometimes that's what you're being informed for, you see? So you got to be willing to take that truth, how it comes, and take it to completion. There's a desire that we all have in, inside of us. Some of us call it our purpose. That is the twofold nature of Kether in your Kabbalistic tree of life, desire and will. Why do you have that desire? We don't know. We have no idea why it's there. We don't know. We'll never know. You say, well, Chief, why do you do all this? I don't know. I have no idea why I do it. But there's something deep, 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 deep within and without that's, that compels me to do it. Why does it compel me? I have no idea. Will I find out? I don't know. I'm just going to do it. Why are you just going to do it? I don't know. You see the deepness of the crown? It's just a bunch of I don't knows. You tough enough to deal with a bunch of I don't knows? Or you got to know every goddamn thing? Because if you need to know everything, it's easy to manipulate you. Where's your spirit? Where's your connection to Kether, to the crown? Then I affirm that you have your Rosh or your Resh experience and you're able to experience what the head is, you see, and understand the importance of it being in the word Barashit. Why would he put head right in the beginning, the, the first word, Barashit? You see, so I will that you find your head. And like I've said before, you know, that you're not walking around with a rat head on you or a cat head. And I, I know we, we love Sekhmet and I know we love Eshu. We love Sobek. We love Haru. But they got animal heads and you're not an animal. Even if we may identify with the qualities of, the, of those particular animals, that's great. But um, those animals need those things because of the habitat that they were made to exist inside of. Your cerebellum is more developed than theirs. Their sense of smell may be more developed. Their sense of emotion may be more. Of a, the sense of emotion, that part of the brain and the tiger is far more developed than yours is. Because it's, it uses its emotion and never be afraid. That's where its ferocity comes from. You ain't got that. You start thinking about getting punched in the face and you want to talk your way out of it. That's smart. You see. You're built and designed differently for a different purpose. So I affirm that you go through cough, tav, and resh. And for anyone who's questioning, you know, where to go and, and what direction to go in, man, just keep stabbing, just keep kicking, keep keep pushing until you get to that, that crown. But, you know, don't be so focused on I need to get a reading. I need to understand this. You ain't going to understand I bet you 90% of you can't even understand what's behind me on that wall. You see, there's so much in the world not to understand. You see, so you got to learn to commune. And when you learn to commune, it's easier for you to, to put a tie and a linkage onto the crown and stay close to it. 
And that's what I affirm for all of you, because Corona is trying to create a new crown. Hey, I, I guess it's good that I couldn't get on Facebook. Right. I guess if you use that word, you know. Um, but yeah, it's, tr it's trying to give you a new head. It's trying to give you a new way to breathe. Breathe through this. I can't breathe right. I can't see right. And even though they didn't teach you in school, your optic nerves are connected to your brain. You see, so your brain stem, your, your, your brain flesh, your eyes, they're all the same thing. The nerves going all the way down your spine. They don't tell you that. They just tell you it's the brain, the brain stem and your spine and go sit down somewhere. Because they never want you to know how important your eyes are. Your eyes are your brain outside of your body. So if I'm not breathing right, I'm not seeing right because your, your breath affects your vision. And if I'm not seeing right, I'm not thinking right. If I'm not thinking right, then I'm not using my actual head. You've replaced my head. So that's what I, I affirm for you. I'm going to close out with that. And I'm going to give it back to uh, Brother Zach. And y'all can do what you're going to do from there. All right. Peace. Give thanks.